JMU's Kurt Signetti heads to Indiana. It's Locked On Sunbelt. You are Locked On Sunbelt, your daily podcast on the Sunbelt Conference, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, Dave Schultz, Locked On Sunbelt, your team every day. Today's episode brought to you by FanDuel. Score early this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. All right, we're making our way to Troy. Laura wasn't exactly motivated earlier today, so we made a pit stop in my former stomping grounds of Mobile, and we'll hit Troy uh, later today. Uh, all right, so we'll talk about Kurt Signetti to IU. That not much of a surprise. It started picking up steam the last couple of days. We got a quarterback battle as we preview the Sunbelt Championship game, and then the all Sunbelt teams came out. I'm not sure there were that many surprises. I'm certainly not going to be familiar with everybody. It seemed like the leading guys got all the big-time awards. Uh, one player seemed to be left out. He got hurt at the end of the season, but I don't think he missed that many games, so... Oh, it is what it is. All right, uh, let's talk about Kurt Signetti taking the uh, IU job. I tried to find out how much it was. Somebody on Twitter said it was $5 million. That's kind of tough to uh, turn down. Uh, it has been announced on both sides uh, that Kurt Signetti has taken the job. That was done, I think, middle of the day. I mean, it was very early when Pete Thamel from ESPN said he was going to uh, Indiana. Let me see. I, I tweeted it out just as it happened. So let's see. He did it at noon. Uh, and I guess I hadn't left yet. So uh, he was being reported at that point in time. Uh, Indiana made an announcement eventually. JMU made an announcement eventually. Uh, and part of the announcement is that uh, Kurt Signetti is going to uh, coach the team in the bowl game. So uh, that is good news while he puts a staff together. Has a little bit of time, right? Doesn't have to do too much recruiting for JMU now. That's going to be up to other people uh, as he puts a staff together and who comes with him and, and so on and so forth. Um, I really didn't see the other side of this. And it is true that JMU is going to have a much better chance of winning a championship in the next couple of years. I'll, I'll rephrase that. Uh, a chance to compete for a championship. All right. They very well could have been in, you know, if the 12 team playoff was this year and they had, you know, qualified um, in the transition period, they very well could be there. Right. If they were undefeated and once they lost, that wasn't going to be the case. But, you know, Jordan McLeod still got another year. You know, they they very well could have been in the same scenario next season and, you know, competed for a national championship. Now, the problem with that is if you're 12 or 11, right, you are taking on five or six. So it's not the easiest thing to do, right? And then if you win that ball game and things are not reseeded, right, you end up, you may end up taking on the number one team. So <laughs> the work would be cut out for you. But you could absolutely play for a national championship, um, which Indiana probably will not be doing anytime soon. Having said that, there is life-changing money, right? He could make more money um, in this contract I don't know what it is. Say it's, again, someone said it was $5 million for five years. So that's $25 million. That's got to be more than he's made uh, in his lifetime. And he really doesn't even have to get through that contract. If he pops in year two or year three, he'll get an extension. So maybe it's up to $6 million a year. So now, you know, if he's gotten 15 through the first three years and he gets 30, that's $45 million, you know, <laughs> through eight years, he's pretty much set. So uh, congratulations to Kurt Signetti. Well earned, well deserved. Again, almost spent 30 years as an assistant coach before he got his first head coaching gig. Uh, and I think it's very gracious of him to coach the bowl game. I think that's very cool, right? Billy Napier didn't do that. I don't think others are doing that. So, you know, it is gracious of him uh, to do so. Uh, Billy did coach the Sunbelt Championship game, but then left before. Uh, the bowl game to get a head start on things. So you would understand it if Kurt Signetti did not do that, but uh, he is coaching the bowl game apparently. Now who they're going to go get, I'm not sure. We'll see who he leaves behind. 
right? You can get an offensive coordinator, a defensive coordinator, something along those lines. Again, those guys could be looking for big raises, right? Do you, do you get the head coaching gig? I should also mention that Kurt Signetti said while the process was going on, or maybe even before the IU process started, um, a JMU made a very competitive offer. We'll put it that way, right? That he would have been, I guess it was reported, he would have been the highest paid coach in the Sun Belt, which is pretty good. That's over seven figures. Um, but again, he does not have the time to kind of wait for the perfect job to come along because of the age. It will be interesting though. We'll pay attention to this, all right? I don't watch that much IU football, but we'll see if he stops dyeing his hair. Then I'm going to laugh. <laughs> if by if by the time, uh, you know, Big Ten Media Days comes around, we'll see if, he, if he's gone gray just a little bit. Everyone's going to be like, well, geez, how much stress have you had already? That's a lot of stress in the last four or five months. Um, or I guess at this point, that would be, it'd be seven or eight months. But, you know, nah, really, it's just I stopped using the dye. So that'll be funny uh, if that's the case. Uh, so we'll see who he brings along, right? These guys who are making, you know, I wouldn't even say solid six-figure salaries. You know, maybe six-figure salaries are all of a sudden going to get solid six-figure salaries, right? Those The OCs and the DCs and Big Tens are making, you know, at least a half a million dollars, three quarters of a million dollars, things like that. So, you know, we'll see. Does a position coach get the, the gig at JMU? Who knows about JMU? We'll, we'll see, right? Uh, um, Fran Brown is a position coach. He's not a coordinator, and he got the gig at Syracuse coming from Georgia. So we'll see what JMU does. Um, it sounds like this all just obviously just happened today, but there's been a lead up by the time we hear about it. I'm sure JMU knew about it. I'm sure he's been open with that. So they've gotten the ball rolling, I'm going to guess. Although they now need a new AD as well. So eh, it could be a combo, a combo, a find here, um, how that's going to work. So kind of have to move a little bit fast, but I think they probably got a little bit of a head start. All right. So that is the big news of the day. Kurt Signetti moving on from JMU, going on to Indiana University. And that is, that's a whale of a job. All right. That is not an easy job. Tom Allen has had some good years. I think they had a, a good year a couple of years ago, right? With Michael Penix Jr. And Ken Womack was there, right? But they, uh, that is not uh, an easy job. That is, you know, I use a bat. That is a pure basketball school. So good luck. Expectations, not necessarily that are high, right? Expectations are kind of like Arkansas and Ole Miss and Kentucky. We just want to win eight to 10 games somewhere along the way, right? And if you, somehow compete for a division title, although I don't think there's many more divisions in the Big Ten. Um, you know, it is, you know, maybe got a shot somehow, but I mean, that is a tough gig um, at Indiana. Uh, trying to compete with the Ohio States, the Michigans, the Wisconsins, the Penn States, you know, even the Illinois, you know, to be honest with you, that's going to be tough. Uh, all right, uh, let's move on. We'll come back and we'll talk about this quarterback battle in the Sun Belt Championship. When we come back, let me tell you about FanDuel. As the weather gets colder, the NFL offers stay hot on FanDuel. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any five, without with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is so easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of, of the NFL. Uh, missed my opportunity the other night. I don't know what I was doing. When the Pelicans were playing the Sixers and Joel Embiid went out. I think they went from, the Pelicans went from, I thought someone said it was a six-point swing. The Pelicans went from like a four-point dog to like a two-and-a-half-point favorite and kind of cruise to a 10 point victory. They blew him out in the first quarter. That would have been easy money, easy money, but I missed it. So, uh, oh, well, we'll keep an eye, an eye out here. These championship games are tough because they're, they're generally close. Michigan may cover. I have no idea about Georgia and Alabama. That could go either way. I got app state covering this ball game, but I think I got Troy uh, winning it. Uh, all right. Dave Schultz locked on Sunbelt. Your team every day. We have a heck of a 
matchup here between uh, Troy and App State with their quarterbacks. Joy Aguilar, who was not the starter coming out of camp, uh, is all of a sudden your newcomer of the year. He has been fantastic. All right, 3,200 yards, almost 3,300, uh, completing about 64% of his passes, uh, 33 touchdowns, nine interceptions. He's been outstanding. He's going up against Gunnar Watson, who Craig Stevenson said that he may be the only six-year quarterback never to enter the portal. Desmond Trotter also happened to be a six-year quarterback from the Jaguars, uh, South Alabama, who did enter the portal but did not transfer. So a little bit of a difference there. Uh, but he's going up against, Aguilar is going up against Gunnar Watson, who we need to go over some of these numbers because they're really good. All right, so he's got almost 30, uh, 3,150 in total yards. He's completing 61% of his passes. He's got 26 touchdowns. And five interceptions. Let me see the game log. I want to find out. Yeah. Did he throw the interception against Southern Miss? Did I miss Did I miss it the other day? Uh, he did throw an interception against uh, Southern Miss. He hadn't thrown one since September against uh, Georgia State. But he's been so good, especially when you look at his stats. They are night and day. Even... Last year, everything is kind of similar, to be honest with you. Completion percentage similar. Yardage is a little bit better, but that's because he threw it more uh, last year. Um, but how about the touchdown to interceptions? Last year, he threw 14 touchdowns, 12 interceptions. That obviously is not good at all. All right. Uh, yardage was 2,800. This year, it's 3,150. Again, a little bit different between the amount of passes thrown. Um, He's always had a lot of interceptions, even seven interceptions and 16 touchdowns. That's not good. You know, just over two to one is not very good. Even his completion percentage that year was 70% in 2020, but that's still not a good. It used to be back in the day, like two to one. Like if you threw, you know, 30 touchdowns and 15 interceptions, it used to be good. Not anymore. It's not. And so that's why Gunnar Watson has played so incredibly well with the 26 touchdowns to five interceptions. So it really comes down to uh, the two defenses. Who forces the other quarterback to make a mistake? Uh, which defense can get consistent pressure on the opposing quarterback? Or the other side of things, which quarterback can make the plays at the end of the ballgame? And you can do it both ways, right? Which quarterback you know, can lead his team on a, a last-minute drive down the field? Uh, to put themselves in position to either score a touchdown or just kick a field goal to win the ball game. Or, and we've talked about this, I don't know if I've talked about it on this show as much as I did on my radio show, that four-minute offense, right? You get a stop. There's somewhere between, I mean, I'm not even say three and a half minutes. I say like four to eight minutes, kind of. Maybe not that much, because that's kind of tough to do. But you get the ball with somewhere between, you know, four or five minutes to go, and you only need a couple of first downs and you've really killed the clock. Right. If you, you know, if you get two, if you convert two third downs, you know, if you get back to back first downs on first downs, you really haven't done anything. You've wasted 80 seconds. That's something, but it's not enough. And so who can, who can get those first downs when they know they're going to be running? Maybe you pass it early. You got to make it a, a good pass. Uh, high percentage play, and it'll be interesting to see which one can do that. Because teams, so often we blame it on the defense at the end of the ball game when really the offense is the one who didn't get it done. All right, and we go back to I can give you an example: Jaden Daniels, right against Ole Miss. Kind of tough to blame Jaden Daniels when you score forty nine points in a ball game, but they had a two score lead. They scored to go up two scores. Then Ole Miss came back down, scored. Jane Daniels threw the ball to his freshman running back who dropped it and they got behind the sticks and they didn't get the first down and almost won the football game. 
And then, you know, that's yeah, everyone blames the defense, giving up 55 points. But if Jaden Daniels and company got two first downs, they would have won the game. Maybe even just one first down. You just needed a first down, maybe. And so that'll be a big part. So we'll see. Again, I think they're both going to play well, well ish. I still think it's going to be like 2017. I'd be shocked if this ball game is in the 30s. The defenses are too good. Um, App States is coming on. Troy struggling a little bit the last couple of games, if you're looking specifically at the last couple of ball games, but it was so good right before that. I'm still looking 20 to 17, Troy. That's what I am uh, suggesting. Okay, let's take a time out. When we come back, we'll go over uh, the all Sun Belt teams. I do want to thank you for, you know, continuing to subscribe where we actually have, you know, <laughs> about 20 subscribers this month. Uh, it would be great to somehow get to 1,000 uh, by the end of the year. All right. We still actually haven't been doing the video for a year. We're coming close. We're coming close. We, yeah, we started the podcast itself back in September, mid September, like right after all the Sun Belt wins, uh, the big upsets of, of the Power Fives. It started like the week after that. Uh, but, uh, do appreciate it. Again, continue to tell people about uh, the podcast. We will be concentrating on basketball a little bit. We'll talk more about the bowl games for sure, right? We don't have to wait all the way till January. We really only have to wait until, you know, a couple weeks in. Uh, and, of course, we'll recap the, the uh, championship game on Monday. I'll be at the championship game, so that'll be fun. I'll post a video uh, as well. Uh, but uh, for the audio podcast, please go to wherever you get your audio podcast. Spotify and Apple Spotify, Apple Spotify, Apple Podcasts and Spotify seem to be the most uh, popular. All right, uh, Dave Schultz, locked on Sun Belt, your team every day. I'm not sure there was a big surprise in any of these big time awards. All right, Jordan McLeod got Player of the Year. Kamani Vidal got Offensive Player of the Year. <laughs> Jalen Green, who did get hurt. See, he got hurt, but he, like, leads the nation in sacks. Uh, and so he got Defensive Player of the Year. Newcomer of the Year was Joey Aguilar from App. Jalen Rayner, the freshman from Arkansas State, he got Freshman of the Year. And Kurt Signetti got Coach of the Year. It's kind of tough to disagree with any of them. All right. Um, I'd like to know what the definition of freshman is. Is that first-year player? Because... And Zeon Chris got hurt is the only thing, right? I don't know what would have been um, because Jalen Rayner is a true freshman. So, and he deserves it. I mean, they all deserve it. I think those are relatively easy uh, award winners. All right. Uh, first team uh, joining McLeod and Kamani Vidal is Marcus Carroll, the running back. The offensive lineman, and, and again, I, I wouldn't know this compared to everybody else. Uh, Isaiah Helms from App State, Bucky Williams from App State, uh, Jacob Byer from Arkansas State, Khalil Crowder from Georgia Southern, and Travis Glover from Georgia State. Zach Horton was your tight end from James Madison, which kind of a little bit of a what's going on there with uh, Neil Johnson. Reggie Brown, uh, Elijah Serrett, and Colin Lacey are your first team wide receivers. All Sun Belt first team defense. Uh, Jalen Green, uh, Jamari. Uh, Chroma from James Madison, Owen Porter, the all everything uh, down lineman, outside linebacker, rusher uh, from Marshall, Richard uh, Juvenor from Troy. He was really good against the Cajuns. Uh, Javon, uh, Javon Salmon uh, from Troy. You do have the linebackers, Andrew Parker Jr., Marquise Watson Trent from Georgia Southern, Jason Henderson from Old Dominion, like leads the world in tackles. Um, corners are uh, Tyreek uh, Funderburk from App State, Micah Ab Abraham from Marshall. And then uh, you do have Jason Voison uh, as one safety and Reddy Stewart as another safety. Voison from South Alabama and Reddy Stewart from Troy. Uh, you're also about first team special teams. Mason Shipley, the Texas State kicker. Interesting. Uh, not going to know how to say this. Pristop from Arkansas State is your punter. Jaden Harrison, um, return specialist, maybe. And. Ismani Maidel, uh, also on there uh, as well. Uh, some other names to go through them. Uh, some good names, and they all also about second team. Aguilar made second team quarterback. Rashin Ali, 
was second bat, so, uh, second team running back with Frank Gore. By the way, Frank Gore is still thinking about coming back. Uh, see, wide receivers were Sam Pinckney from Coastal Carolina, Caleb Hood from Georgia Southern, and Joey Hobart from uh, Texas State. Hmm. Um, second team uh, defense, James Carpenter from James Madison, TJ Jackson from Troy, Quentin Wilfon from South Alabama. And Del uh, Pettis from Troy, he's the defensive back with the Troy NIL deal that has been helping uh, Josh Boatwell from uh, the Troy Messenger pay for his cancer treatments. That's tremendous. They had a goal of 10000 but I still think they're collecting. And it's over 11000 So good for Del Pettis. He should be on first team just for that reason. <laughs> uh, Sunbelt third team, Gunnar Watson uh, made it there. Running back was Jalen White. I'm a little bit surprised about LaDainian Webb. Kind of tough to put him over some of these other guys, but I mean, led the t led the conference in scoring 16 touchdowns, and he didn't play in the last ball game, and he played sparingly in the first few ball games. So interesting that he didn't do a little bit better. Cajuns, AJ Gilly um, on the offensive line. We said Neil Johnson, uh, Jabry Barber, and Chris Lewis. Boy, awfully low for those two really good wide receivers. Uh, and the guy not here is. Uh, Landon Burton, the center for the Cajuns. I don't know if that was out of sight, out of mind. He got hurt in the Southern Miss ball game. Can I see when that was? Let me see if I can find that one. So that was on that Thursday night. And hold on a second. That was on the Thursday night. And how long ago? I want to see how long ago it was. That's my other question. Because Landon Burton is really is really really good and it was it's only three games ago man he only missed he only missed two ball games troy and monroe unless he got hurt no it had to be the southern miss ball game yeah it had to be the southern miss ball game so boy i then that's one guy and again obviously i know more of the cajuns than the other guys but especially on the offensive line but Landon Burton got robbed. He, I mean, he was an anchor of, was it the best rushing team in the Sun Belt? That's the only thing. So that would be the only one I would say where he was. We did have a list of honorable mention. And he didn't even get that. I don't, yeah, something's not right. <laughs> something's not right there. Maybe I'm missing it somewhere. I don't know how Landon Burton is. Not there. Let's see here. Rushing. All right. Let's see here. Yards per game. Mm, not really. That's not right. Is that right? Oh, maybe that's well, maybe that's in bad games. Uh, Louisiana, 148, 141.8, but that probably went down after. Hold on. That's a different season. <laughs> hold on. Um, afterwards, they were. Let's see here. Rushing. Second in the league in rushing, 183 yards per ball game. Yeah. And they average the most per rush. Yeah. Landon Burton got jobbed. But it is what it is. Everyone can't be on these things. But not to even make the honorable mention. I don't know what that's about. Uh, but he got a little bit royally jobbed. Uh, they had 100 against Southern Miss. They had 122 yards rushing in the first half, 10 in the second. Some of that may be happenstance, but a lot of that is Lamb and Burton getting hurt. And they couldn't get it in from the one four different times because Lamb and Burton was not on the field. So he got a little bit job. I got your back there, Lamb. Uh, all right. Um, that'll do it for this episode of Locked on Sunbelt. We'll get one out. We'll certainly do a quick uh, recap on Saturday uh, after the ball game. It's not supposed to be great weather. So we'll see how that all works out, getting something done uh, as quickly as possible. Uh, and then I'm going to make my way back and see how, how that works out uh, as well. But we'll certainly have a full recap on on Monday of the ball game. Looking forward to it. Have not been to a football game in Troy. Been to a couple of baseball games and a basketball game. And they're playing Friday night. I think Scott Cross... Uh, and the Trojans are playing Friday night, so we can go enjoy a uh, little Sunbelt hoops and see our guy Barrett McKnight. That'll be fun uh, to watch him more. Uh, all right, thanks so much for tuning in to Locked on Sunbelt, your team every day. Again, 
Thanks for subscribing. Let's keep it going. Uh, we got a month to, to get it to 1,000 before the end of the year. It would be a huge help. Uh, do appreciate it. Thank you so much. Once again, I'm Dave Schultz, and you've been listening and watching Locked On Sunbelt, your team, every day.